my dear students in this session we will discuss about the various allied types of tissue culture techniques in which we are going to describe anther culture explain pollen culture and we are going to describe ovule culture we are going to identify embryo culture and also we are going to explain endosperm culture and again we are going to describe protoplast culture the plant tissue culture practice has altered the approach of the gardeners or nurserymen towards plant breeding in the same breath the pertinence of this technology to the propagation of trees and shrubs has been accepted a number of organizations have recognized that tissue culture facilities and commercial scale acts are presently in process for the mass breeding of apples and a few other designated wood species the reason for such culture techniques is to enhance the propagation of plant breeding in quality and quantity and that too in a short span of time it is also to be considered that it should be at affordable price which the nursery man can afford to spend so many research and experiments are made with a variety of species in all genres to understand their perfect fit as far as culturing is considered such a consideration essentially includes an overview of tissue culture as a breeding tool the chief influence of plant tissue culture will not be felt in the area of micro propagation however it would be greatly felt in the area of controlled operations of plants at the cellular level which was sensed prior to the introduction of tissue culture techniques plant tissue culture methods are vital to many kinds of theoretical inquiry in addition to numerous applied features of plant science earlier plant tissue culture techniques have been used in academic inquiries of totipotency and the role of hormones in cyto differentiation and organogenesis presently tissue culture plants that have been genetically engineered offer awareness into plant molecular biology and gene regulation plant tissue culture methods are essential to advanced extents of applied plant science counting plant biotechnology and agriculture for instance hand picked plants can be cloned and cultured as a suspended cells from which plant products can be reaped furthermore genetically engineered trans transgenic whole plants were developed only following the tissue culture procedures tissue culture methods are furthermore required in the development of somatic haploid embryos from which homozygous plants can be produced therefore tissue culture techniques are noticeable in academic and applied plant science let us discuss in detail the various plant tissue culture techniques further let us start off with understanding what anther culture is anther culture is the method of using anthers to cultivate haploid plantlets the method was introduced in 1964 by two indian scientists guha and maheshwari this method can be used in over 200 species comprising tomato rice tobacco barley geranium and tree species anther culture is a technique by which the developing anthers at a specific and critical stage are cut out aseptically from sealed flower bud they are then cultured on a nutrient medium where the microspores within the cultured anther mature into callus tissue or embryoids these callus tissue or embryoids give rise to haploid plantlets either through organogenesis or embryogenesis in experiments using datura inaxia induction frequencies of almost 100% and a yield of more than 1000 plantlets of our calluses have occurred under optimal conditions from one anther success can be determined within 24 hours as cells begin to divide haploids can be produced in polyploid plants in crops like wheat tobacco 
Glover. Let us now take a look at some of the advantages which make anther culture a valuable method for obtaining haploid plants. It is one of the easiest methods to develop haploid plantlets. This technique is fairly simple also. In some species, it is easy to induce cell division in the immature pollen cells. It is also observed that the induction frequency is very high in certain species such as Datura inoxia. A large proportion of the anthers used in culture respond that is called induction frequency that is, is higher in the case of Datura inoxia. More than 1000 plantlets were produced under optimal conditions from one anther. So, large quantity of haploids can be produced in a short span of time. Of course, there are some disadvantages of using anther culture has also been noticed like when working with some types of plants, the majority of plants produced have been non-haploid. In cereals, very few green plants are obtained. Many of the plants are albinos or green albino chimeras. Haploids are beneficial for the reason that they carry only one allele of each gene. Therefore, any hidden mutation or representative is apparent. Plants with lethal genes are excluded from the gene pool. One can harvest homozygous diploid or polyploid plants in breeding. Haploids are a naturally happening progression like parthenogenesis. Haploids can be obtained through embryo rescue, anther culture and microspore culture. Having understood what anther culture is, let us now move on to understand pollen culture. Pollen or microspore culture is an in vitro technique by which the pollen grinds reasonably at the uninucleated stage are taken out aseptically from the whole anther. Then pollen grains are cultured on nutrient medium where the microspores without generating male gametes mature into haploid embryoids or callus tissue. The embryoids or callus tissue then gives rise to haploid plantlets by embryogenesis or organogenesis. The normal pollen development involves three phases. Pollen mother cells are found in the anther primordia. In the first phase, the pollen mother cell is formed as a result of meiosis. This is referred to as the meiosis phase. Following the formation of the pollen mother cell is the formation of a tetrad from each pollen mother cell. In the second phase, the microspores are released from tetrads. These microspores develop as individuals inside the anther. This formation of pollen grains in the third phase forms the first pollen mitosis. Second pollen mitosis may take place after pollen germinate on a stigma. This division forms two asymmetric cells, generative and vegetative. The vegetative cell elongates into the pollen tube and carries two male cells. One among the two cells fertilizes the egg and the vegetative nucleus degenerates. The first stage involved in the development of the pollen culture is the dicots, which is the first pollen mitosis. This takes place between tetrad formation and exine formation. The next stage is the monocots, which is the early uninucleate stage. It is in this stage that the staging of the pollen culture takes place. Now let us quickly take a look at the factors influencing the growth of anther and pollen culture in detail. Mineral salts are needed for growth past the globular stage of embryo development. In early stages, the minerals may be supplied by the anther wall itself. Iron is particularly critical in solanaceous plants. Additional organics are not required. Other plant species may require complex organics such as coconut milk. Activated charcoal is often used since it increases the frequency of cultured anthers. In some cases, extracts of the anther wall have been added to the medium or conditioned medium has been used. 
The essential nutritional requirements during the pollen culture is sucrose, mineral salts like iron, complex organics like coconut milk and activated charcoal. There are two groups of plants with regard to the requirement of hormones. There are species that require hormone and the species which require little or no hormones. Hormones are used cautiously because they induce callus formation at the end of the flament, pollen and form the anther wall instead of direct embryogenesis from microspores. The genus included in this group are Nicotiana, Datura, Atropa and Petunia. Species that require hormones are monocots such as barley and rice. It appears they need both auxins and cytokinins. Plantlets may regenerate from callus. Temperature enhances the induction frequency of microspore androgenesis. In certain uh, scenarios, temperature is used to trimmer the microspores so that they will modify their developmental path. The low temperature treatment to anther or flower bud enhances the haploid formation. For example, tobacco anthers produce more plantlets when placed at 4 degrees Celsius for 5 to 7 days. The reported increase in response is from 21 percent to a 58 percent of anthers that give rise to embryos. Brassica requires heat. At 25 degrees Celsius, researchers reported that 0.5 percent anthers gave rise to embryos. After culture at 35 degrees Celsius for 24 hours, response increased to 9 percent. Physiological status of donor plants such as plants under water stress and the age of donor plant highly affect the pollen embryogenesis. Young plants in which flowering have just begun is usually the best responsive period for culturing. Photo period of stock plants could be important. Plants starved of nitrogen may give more responsive anthers compared to those that are well fed with nitrogenous fertilizers. The isolated microspore culture technique has been developed in order to avoid certain problems such as the formation of chimeras that occur because several cells may contribute to the formation of a single plant. The usage of this method assures that the plantlet originates from a single cell. However, much more complex methods had to be developed to culture isolated microspores. Nurse culture uses the feeder layer usually of cell suspension culture underneath the microspores. This is one of the major techniques used. Filter paper is used to separate the feeder layer microspores. Albinism can be common in plants regenerated from anther culture such as rice and wheat in monocots. In rice, a cold treatment for 10 to 13 days at 10 to 13 degrees Celsius was the best method found to reduce numbers of albino plants. Using this cold treatment contributed 90 percent green and only 10 percent albino embryos. It was also observed that a longer cold treatment gave more albinos. Androgenesis is the in vitro development of haploid plants that come from totipotent pollen grains through a series of cell division and differentiation. It is of two types called direct androgenesis and indirect androgenesis. At this instant, let us see what they are. The microspores act like a zygote and induce chance to form embryoid which eventually give rise to a plantel is called direct androgenesis and the microspores divide recurrently to form a callus tissue which distinguishes into haploid plantlets is called indirect androgenesis. Having learnt about anther and pollen culture, let us quickly see the advantages of pollen culture over the anther culture. In the course of anther culture, there is constantly the probability that somatic cells of the anther that are deployed will also react to the culture condition and consequently yield undesirable deployed calli or plantlets. At times, the growth of microspores inside the anther 
may be disturbed due to growth hindering elements seeping out of the anther wall in contact with nutrient medium. Now let us move on to the ovule culture and its importance. Test tube pollination and fertilization can be done using ovule culture. Using this technique, pollen can be germinated in the same culture as the excised ovule. Also it is possible to induce a in vitro fertilization leading to the formation of mature seeds containing viable embryos. Hybrid seedlings in interspecific and intergeneric cross are effectively achieved by using the ovule culture. The hybrid embryo of abelmoscus in several interspecific cross fails to develop beyond the heart or turbido shaped embryo. Viable hybrids have been obtained in 3 out of 5 crosses attempted in abelmoscus species by ovule culture. Seed development and the production of fiber from different types of cotton through fertilized ovule culture have been demonstrated. But hybrid plants have not been obtained between the different species of cotton through fertilized ovule culture. Although it is probable to get haploid callus by culturing unfertilized ovules. In orchid plants, you can observe that the seeds of orchids germinate only in association with a proper fungus. Moreover, the maturation of the seed capsule of many orchids is time consuming. Quite a lot of attempts have been made to culture the fertilized ovule of orchids in vitro to overcome such difficulties. The artificial induction of poly embryos has been very effective in many horticultural plants. Many experiments have been made to observe that adventive embryos in culture can be formed by inducing the new cells of mono embryonic ovules of citrus. The ovule culture has definitively proved to be rewarding to make many varieties of citrus virus free. Before the introduction of ovule culture, it was nearly impossible to make the citrus virus free. We may now want to move on to the next culture technique which is embryo culture. In angiosperms, embryo is the miniature sporophyte resulting from the fertilized egg or zygote. In seed bearing plants, embryos are easily accessible as they can be separated with relative ease from the maternal tissue and cultures in vitro under aseptic conditions in media of known chemical composition. The first systematic attempt to grow the embryos in vitro was made by Hanning in the year 1904 and further progress was provided by Liabek in the year 1929 who demonstrated the most important practical application of this technique to produce hybrids which are otherwise not possible due to embryo abortion. For in vitro culture of embryo, generally it is necessary to excise them from their surrounding tissues. The mature embryos can be isolated with relative ease by splitting open the seeds. Seeds with a hard seed coat are dissected after soaking them in water. For plants with minute seeds, the isolation of embryos can be done under dissecting microscope on a sterilized slide. In plants like orchids, where the seeds are minute and lack functional endosperm, the entire ovule having embryos are cultured on the medium. The ability of the excised embryos from non-viable seeds to grow successfully in artificial medium supplied with the nutrients bypassed the problem of wide hybridization and to enable transference of resistant genes for pests and diseases and various environmental stresses into the cultivated species and also successful in intergeneric cross involving hardium and sea kale, triticum and sea kale. Seed dormancy problem can be overcome by providing specific signals for seed germination rightly through embryo culture like in Musa species and Brassica species and Brassica species. In endosperm culture, 
we will take a look at two types of cultures. They are that of the mature and immature endosperm. Culture of mature endosperm in which fruits are surface sterilized and the endosperm plus embryo are dissected out for culture of mature endosperm. The dissection takes place under aseptic conditions. Culture of immature endosperm consists of all the seeds are sterilized and the endosperm tissue is carefully cut out under aseptic conditions for culture of immature endosperm. This is done using a stereoscopic microscope. It is better to separate the endosperm explants free of embryo tissue. If this is not done, it could lead to the impurity of the endosperm callus with the tissue of embryo origin which are diploid tissues. Protoplasts are cells of plants, fungi or bacteria in which the cell wall has been removed, but the plasma membrane is intact. Short living or long lasting genetic transformation by introduction of transgene DNA is one among the many uses for these naked cells. The other uses may be somatic hybridization by protoplast fusion of species or subspecies resistant to traditional crossbreeding. The other uses may include isolation of subcellular organelles. There is availability of a number of enzyme products to break down the cell wall. Cellulases, hemicellulases, pectinases or some of the individual hydrolytic enzymes. Pectinase from rhizobus species or drysilase TM or some crude extracts with several particularities. Some of the thermostable cellulases are almost pure organism preparations. Micropropagation is the word which best expresses the message of the tissue culture technique. The prefix micro generally refers to the small size of the tissue taken for propagation. Likewise, micro also refers to the size of the plants which are formed as a result of propagation. Micropropagation is the breeding of large numbers of plants from minor quantities of the store plant in comparatively small stages of time. The original tissue piece may be taken from shoot tip, leaf, lateral bud, stem or root tissue conditional on the type of plant. In maximum circumstances, the original plant is not destroyed in the process. When the plant is positioned in tissue culture, propagation of lateral buds and adventitious shoots takes place in some other cases. The differentiation of shoots directly from callus takes place. These results are in massive increase in the number of shoots available for rooting. Rooted microskitings or plantlets of many plant types have been recognized in production conditions. These cuttings or plantlets are then effectively grown either in vessels or in field plantings. It is inferred that this practice is a means of accelerated asexual propagation. It is also observed that plants produced by these techniques respond similarly to any own rooted vegetative propagated plant. These are the two most crucial understandings that are made out of micropropagation. Many distinctive advantages are achieved with micropropagation when compared with the conventional propagation techniques. One such advantage is that in less than a year, a single X plant can be multiplied into several thousand plants. With the most plant types, the use of the original tissue X plant does not destroy the parent plant. Once this method is recognized, vigorously dividing cultures will become a continuous source of micro cuttings. This can result in plant propagation under greenhouse environments without seasonal disturbance. Gardeners or nurserymen can produce particular superior clones of ornamental plants in adequate masses, which is sure to have an influence on the countryside plant market. With that, we come to the end of the session on tissue culture techniques. So, let us now rapidly go through some of the main learnings that we can take home today. 
we started with the learning on anther culture. Anther culture is the process of using anthers to culture haploid plantlets. This technique is very simple and easy to induce cell division in the immature pollen cells in some types of plants. A great proportion of the anthers used in culture respond. It is positively effective to produce haploids numbers in a very short span of time. Pollen or microspore culture is an in vitro technique. Isolated pollen can be cultured by two methods. The first method is considered as the basic protocol for pollen culture. The second method is called as the nurse culture technique. We then saw how ovule culture is important among the culture techniques. Test tube pollination and fertilization can be done using ovule culture. Hybrid seedlings in interspecific and intergeneric crosses are effectively achieved. Seed development and the production of fiber from the different species of cotton through fertilized ovule culture have been demonstrated. The artificial induction of poly embryos has been very effective in many horticultural practices. In embryo culture, microorganisms are increased in number using an embryo culture which acts as a nutrient medium.